right, thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I see that just took a photo picture a couple of minutes ago. Um, I can't wait to see actually the, the photo group. Um, we have the pleasure, great pleasure to welcome Jenny Swan. Why it's a great pleasure for many reasons. One, it's a chocolate pleasure, but it's not only that. Uh, to be honest with you, I've had to be in touch with Janice for years, actually. Since the beginning of Imagination Week in Singapore, that was seven years ago, six or seven years ago, uh, I've tried to invite Janice Wong. But the Janice Wong agenda is an amazing reason, and it's a great pleasure to welcome you today, and thank you, Janice, for being with us. Janice is a multi-product and multi-channel confectionery brand that creates to inspire us where hearts meet design and, of course, imagination. Headquartered in Singapore and helped by a multi-award winning chef, Janice formed the team never sending patients for culinary heart as proper the patient to test the limit of dessert making. Chef Janice Wong started her first dessert restaurant 2 a.m. It's not so far from here actually from Singapore uh, campus because it's a Holland village and I highly encourage you to look at this amazing dessert restaurant 2 a.m. It has been established in 2007. 2014, Dennis Wong Singapore brand was formally established to market a wide range of confectionery products including custom chocolate bonbon, cakes and ice cream. The company has kept up with consumer preferences and has increasingly focused leveraging digital channel to engage with its customers in recent years. These digital channels contribute significantly to the retail business today and are expected to be increasingly so moving forward. Janice Wong in Singapore truly embraces food technology and innovation. Chef Janice Wong's effort in experimenting with ingredients, cooking techniques and machines led to creations of edible art. 3D printed chocolate and others, which in turn quick started a flurry of activities that saw the business expanding to the international stage. And to be totally transparent with you, every chocolate maker in France knows Janice Wong from Pierre Hermé to Pierre Marcolini, or for instance, last week we were with Nicolas Cloiseau. Everybody knows Janice Wong. Looking ahead, this unique confessionary concept to the market. Janice from Singapore will continue pushing the boundaries and integrate new food technologies and innovations in the product offering. Janice Wong, Singapore is currently present in Japan, in London, and of course in Abu Island. It's a great honor, Janice, to welcome you. We had a quick talk a couple of months ago when I was in Singapore, um, and, and we had a, a very, very quick chat together in order to make sure that you will come. It's a great pleasure. Thank you. It's an honor to welcome you. The floor is George Hens. Thank you. Wonderful. Yes, it's going to be a whole evening full of chocolate. I believe uh, Prof has also um, you know, got some chocolates for you as a gift from us. But beyond that, there will be bonbons uh, distributed later. All right, so it's a pleasure to be here today. Uh, pleasure's all mine as well. Uh, really excited to, to be here because it's my first time. And uh, of course, my journey is a little bit uh, different. Um, I was enrolled in a business um, school as well. I mean, I, I did NUS, I, I graduated with, the, um, with a diploma in uh, business and economics, a bachelor of economics. And, you know, I wasn't happy. I was like, you know, studying, I'm not asking you to all be a chef. It's, 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 yeah, I have a different story for that. But, you know, I, I think personally, I felt like I needed to do a lot more. I, I grew up here, but I was, I was also three years in Japan. Um, I traveled around with my parents when I was a baby. And, you know, Singapore is very, very clean. I think a lot of you might have had um, experiences overseas and here as well. Um, you, you'll find that everything is pre-packed, you know, pre-packaged. You go to a supermarket, it's so clean. My journey started before 2 a.m. dessert bar when I went to on an exchange program in Australia and um, I tasted fresh strawberries from the ground. You know, some of you may take it for granted you have had that at your grandma's backyard, you know, but you know, for me growing up as a kid in um, very developed countries, we are always so protected. 
Um, so I tasted that, you know, strawberries from the ground. And what I tasted was earthy notes, grassy notes. I could taste earth. Um, as a Singaporean kid, you rarely taste those notes of earthy, smoky, grassy, and all that other notes. So it inspired me to change my entire career and be a chef. And I thought to myself, well, being a savory chef was very tough. Um, why don't I just focus and choose desserts? And hence, when I was 24, um, 15 years back, I started 2AM Dessert Bar. Um, this is still there. Um, it's an open concept. And that bar that's still there today, that dream of mine to have you come up the stairs, second story, you come to somebody's kitchen, and there we serve you all the different tastes of desserts. Um, so that was my inspiration 15 years ago on why I want to be a chef. And to me, I never knew I had, you know, the, the power of imagination. I never knew. I think imagination, the word there, it's always out there. But what really is the power of imagination? And so when I started creating, I was like, oh, I get a plate. I'm, I'm free now, you know, to create whatever I want on my menu. I have guests at night. Um, it depends, right? So you have the freedom. Now you are like completely free. And I thought to myself, okay, I love to create. I love to put things on the menu. Uh, but you know, it was just beyond food on the plate. I think I didn't realize that I was able to put art on the plate. Um, I think it was a journey that was constantly evolving. Um, through that journey, I found my strengths and of course my weaknesses. And um, to me, this is one of um, the desserts, signature desserts that we had uh, before. And we just took it off the menu. It was featured on MasterChef. But this dessert is really um, very special to me because in our dessert bar, we create a lot of desserts without references. Imagination for me is when you have no reference. So just imagine all of you have tasted a croissant, a a curry, a pot of curry. If you've never tasted curry before, and I just tell you it's a spicy broth, what would you put in that pot of broth? And so that is really pushing your imagination. Thinking, oh, I might not put coconut, I might not put bay leaf, I will not put turmeric, because I've never tasted that before. So there I was trying to create desserts out from raw ingredients. If I never read a recipe book, but I have to cook for all of you today, how do I do that? How do I then use techniques that I don't know and create that? That was really my first baby step to pushing my imagination, throwing away everything that I've learned I know, and so that I could start from zero and then pushing the boundary. So this dessert was created with water. Um, I wanted to create an aerated mousse um, that was stable. And so I put xanthan um, and then yogurt inside. So I was just creating without any recipes. And there we made very unique recipes out of this. Um, the next few desserts as well. So creating the experience for me was uh, very special in 2AM Dessert Bar. Previously, we were pouring chocolate into the table. Obviously, this is all very new. Um, this is like seven, eight years ago. We were pouring chocolate on the table, put a glass on top, putting art on the table. Um, now we have stickers on top because we are changing it for, for high tea. But, you know, again, it was all about pure imagination. Then I went to open a lab here in Fusionopolis in 2011. Um, that was very, very special for me because I found out that it was so important to, again, push that imagination and I needed the space to do it. I needed people to surround myself with like-minded people um, to pursue this dream. So we created a lab right here is, um, and, and we, we moved from this lab, but we went out documenting every ingredient of Singapore and really collaborating with all different chefs. But what I'm trying to say here, it's so important. It's very different. Um, a lot of people don't know the story of ours um, that we invested a lot in uh, research and development. Um, they usually just see what's on either social or Instagram. But what's very important for me was really to push that boundary and go, I need to spend time 
time to research, time for myself, time for my team to say, okay, we can do this. Then we started creating all these desserts, you know, so it's a very sweet world for me um, in the past. It was very, very sweet. And I think the main thing was, you know, what's beyond just doing this? I couldn't do this for 20 years. I mean, you think about your Michelin chefs, great. They're consistent. They're constantly pushing the boundary. After you get your three Michelin, what do you get? What do you do? Maintain it. Um, but personally, I needed development. I needed to push myself to say, what's next? So very, very quickly, I realized art, you know, it was already art on a plate. What if I could create, you see that marshmallows over there? What if I t X 10,000 of these marshmallows, put it on a wall, what happens? And that's what happens. So then I realized that whatever you imagine is your own world. So my world was full of sweets, full of colors, full of textures. And that was my first installation. I took uh, one ingredient of my dessert and I threw it on a huge wall. So that was a wall of sugar. That was a whole ceiling of marshmallow. Um, just imagine this whole ceiling full of marshmallows. You gotta climb on your table and pluck and eat it. Um, it was that, and this was 2011. So I, we started our first edible art in 2011. Uh, we haven't stopped since. Um, and I j actually just came back from painting a big art wall in Marina Bay Sands um, just today. Um, it's on my social Instagram, so you can see um, it's Janice Wong 2 AM. You'll see lots and lots of different types of art that we do. Um, it's interactive. It's all about imagination. So I thought to myself, I'm not going to give you, you know, a plate and I'm going to dish it out. That's too, that's too like restricted for me. So I said, okay, I'm going to put it, plaster it all over the wall so everybody can enjoy it. I, then I started, I started continuing the imagination and continuing this, this crazy idea of putting chocolate on the wall, painting down the town, of putting a lot of edibles on the wall um, and to feed everybody. So last night, we were tasked to feed 700 people in an hour. And we're like, how do you usually feed 700 people that many sweets in an hour, right? You need how many servers to pass, pass the dish around? I mean, it's too boring for me to, if you really want my opinion. I think canapes and waiters and all that. Um, so I was like, why don't we just throw it on the wall again? So we are always constantly um, thinking about textures, space, uh, movement. Um, and I think my passion also lies not only with dessert, but also in architecture. So if the, the photo that you saw earlier, this was in a national um, gallery of Singapore. And um, in this exhibition, we fed 350 people uh, from three walls. So that was a marshmallow ceiling uh, where, you know, you could climb, plug, eat it. Then we continued to create really, really crazy installations, um, taking things from underwater, under the sea. But all I want to say is, you know, how do you always just push your imagination? I think that's the one thing that we are always questioning ourselves. It, can it come naturally? How do you work on it? I think for us, it was very, very clear that it's everywhere. It's in front of you, it's cultural. Um, so wherever I went, I was always on the lookout. I talked to people and I get inspiration. Um, and I love, the, I love the sea. So we started this in 2011 to take um, sugar corals. We boil isomalt to 160 degrees. Now that technique, I learned it from a Michelin chef in Chicago, but they were doing it small. They were doing like a tiny little coral. And I said to myself, what if we did that? And we times uh, 1,000 kilos, and that's literally what we did. We took 1,000 kilos of ice malt, and then we made these corals, and we filled the entire NBS Sky Park with this, and uh, fed thousands of people with um, seafood. I mean, seaweed and, and and things like that. So it was really fun. I think for me, um, it was always about pushing the boundary, about uh, giving people happiness, pleasure, and joy and color. So 
that was it. I mean, then you ask yourself, okay, you do all these installations, you climb up, you make people jump for your food. Uh, we did that last year at, in Bali because, you know, Bali is very chill. Um, we made people jump for your food and we make you lick the walls. Um, it's very different, right? But what's next? Okay, we, we did something with um, UV, edible UV paint. We're like scrambling and taking all these new ideas, you know, and, and, and making things fly, for example. Whether it's a balloon, whether it's, um, I don't know, things that, that, that uh, can spin. So this was in Ibiza in uh, Spain and we made, uh, we were part of Sublimotion which is a very, very cool um, exhibition. Uh, it's, a, it's a dinner and you enter this dinner and your entire world is transformed. Um, so for me, that was fun. But I think at the end of the day, it was always not enough. And I think right now, you know, after doing this for about 12 years, um, this was um, an installation we did about three years ago. The next step was to provide permanent pleasure to people, of course. Um, I think what we did was always an event. Um, I mean, if budget allowed, we would have painted all your tables in front of you with chocolate. Uh, we could have done that, but uh, yeah, maybe Prof can hear that and <laughs> that might be the next thing. Um, but you know, this was an installation we did for a theme park. So imagine the journey of a chocolatier who started plating food, um, you know, on a plate. And then to be tasked to design um, theme parks, it's, it's pressure, it's great. But I think for me was how do you give somebody pleasure with an empty canvas, I give you a, a room and you you design it. You know, you have a square box. Everything is um, up to you. So one of the things uh, this was a very successful installation. Uh, we decided to to make it look like um, paint, chocolate paint coming out of our jars. It's a very signature thing of ours that you could paint in our jar, and uh, you can see kids are running around these all day long. It's a permanent uh, sculpture. And this is in Korea. So this was our first um, theme park experience. So for me, that was my journey 15 years back. And then fast forward four or five years, you know, you're creating artworks. And I was like, what snakes? I think I needed something stable. I needed something that I could take, you know, that I could let you take home. Because none of you could come to these exhibitions unless you're invited. So I said, okay, I gotta start doing tiny little things. And this is what you taste today. You taste our bonbons. Um, so we started hand painting our chocolates in Singapore, putting Singapore flavors in there. Um, bearing in mind, this was again, 10 years ago where you don't really have Singapore signature flavors um, in, in bonbons. It's bizarre because we've grown so much, but if you, f if you rewind 15 years back, and you guys were probably like seven years old, um, if you rewind that, Singapore was not what it is. It, there's no Michelin, there is no Asia 50 best. Um, I took inspiration when I was in Mexico and they put grasshoppers in the bonbon. And I was like, why are we not, they put mezcal, tequila. And I was like, why are we not putting out brilliant Singapore flavors there? We have laksa, we've got ginger flour, got beautiful, beautiful flavors. So we put all that in a tiny bite. That is also imagination because it's right in front of you. You decide what you want to taste and how you want to perceive it. And the colors can be deceiving. So this is then my next project. So if you see the journey of it, it's like, it's very organic. What I want to share today to hopefully inspire you is that there, there was really no script written. It was, as organic as, as it is. This is our most prized uh, innovation. Um, this year we're focusing a lot more into innovation. So this is a chocolate crayon. And we realized that, okay, I mean, some people were kind of doing it with food waste, some people were making it um, different, but it smelled terrible. I don't know why the edible crayon smelled bad. Uh, so we did our research and we're like, okay, we gotta do something different. So when you talk about imagination, it means that the user 
needs to do something with it, right? Or if you're tasting it, you got to use your imagination without a menu to think what those flavors were. Or you got to make it out for yourself. So that's kind of really pushing the boundary. So we decided to create a box set where kids and all ages, there's, there's no limit, no boundary to what we create. This is the chocolate crayon. So we decided to do a box set of 8, 40. Um, and you can create and design. And, and then you draw on this paper and you draw whatever you want to draw. But after you draw it, you eat it. Then you eat your own drawing. Um, yeah, so I mean, of course, a lot of people are like, you know, oh, kids are going to start eating uh, normal crayons. But you know what? Never ever let any of that disturb or, or, or stop your imagination. Because if it did, I wouldn't have done this. I think a lot of people were like, you know, but I said, what if it's the other way around? You know, I mean, yes, you have the duty as a parent to tell your kids what is edible and what's not. So for me, I'm not going to stop at my imagination. I'm going to continue and I'm going to create. So this was uh, one of our um, products that we did. And um, you can see that in this journey, it's very, very, very colorful. I wouldn't speak a lot too much on, um, on that because I think what's very exciting for me now and I want to share this with you is we've done that. You know, we've done the sky's the limit. I mean, painting in the Met Museum or, or any museum, any gallery. We just did one last year in the Perth Museum. Um, and it wasn't exciting for us. So we decided to try and create Singapore's first single origin chocolate. I think Prof does want to um, grow some cacao here, hopefully. Um, any of you have green fingers? No? Okay, okay. Um, well, we donate a lot of, um, we gift and we donate a lot of uh, cocoa trees. We decide, I, I'm like, you know, chocolate, everybody has have, had chocolate before. But in Singapore, if you want to see a cacao tree, where do you find it? You know, you can't really find it anywhere here. There's some ornamental ones, they're not so pretty, Gardens by the Bay, Botanical Gardens. And we said, you can grow cocoa in Johor, you can grow cocoa anywhere uh, around us, but why not Singapore? It's because we have no land. So land costs here, one hectare of land, which is already very cheap, is 4,000 a month. It's very cheap. But the U is so small, so little, that we would be losing money every single month. So I decided to go to the schools. And so we started planting, and I brought here today a very, very tiny bar of chocolate, but it's Singapore's first single origin. So we made history last year um, after a year journey of growing cocoa. It's bizarre, I tell you, but the journey of a chocolatier here is that you don't really see this at all. You don't see the cacao, you don't taste the fresh fruit, you don't know how it looks like, and you don't know how to ferment it. So then, how do we teach? And that was my mission. My mission was to put that across, set the base, set the foundation, so that chocolatiers and people alike will be able to use the power of imagination to create whatever it is next. We didn't fear, um, this is going to be a video soon, we didn't fear to share. I think that was my next thing to you. I think a lot of uh, creators, they fear to share a lot of information because it's original and for sure. But for us creatives, I think um, it's, it's very powerful when you share. So we take the fruit. Show it to you. That's how it looks like. Okay, so that was my home experiment last year. Hmm, COVID, you know, stuck at home, cannot paint down the towns, cannot do any installation, what do I do? We started picking cacao, fresh fruit from Singapore and we decided to grow more cacao and give back to people like Gardens by the Bay and Botanical Gardens. 
And I think this meaningful project comes out with a lot more than you imagine. It, it literally took the entire Singapore now to, to come on board. A lot of schools are on board uh, with 40 trees um, that are also, I'm going to just fast forward this one. So there's a lot of, um, that was a farmer, but there was a lot of, uh, this is in Spectra School. So there's a lot of schools that are growing cacao. I mean, just think about it. Power of information. The power of just sharing. And there you have it. Singapore's first homegrown cocoa. To me right now, what is really powerful is of course sustainability. And that's why I'm here to, to just only also share that part to say, hey, if you have a dream, go for it. Because you never know. And um, this was our, you can, you can recognize it. I mean, it's a school, it's so bizarre. Um, when, when I go around the world and I give talks and, uh, and we share that, you know, Singapore schools have cacao trees and we have fruiting it. It's completely bizarre, but you know what? It's wonderful because you're making change, you're educating and you're giving back. Um, and I started putting in people's homes. So we basically broke all, everything that was normal, everything that people knew. For example, you're, you're meant to only grow it in the Amazons, in the forest. But actually, no, if you have the power of community, you can make change. And so we started planting in people's houses, giving them PowerPoint decks to, to, to see how to grow or a PDF. And, and you grow your own and you, with technology, you can actually ferment your own cocoa as well, which is what we did. And so we started to bring cocoa to home. I mean, this is really COVID. I think for me, the power of Pure imagination doesn't stop. We went all out. You know chocolate as it being in the Amazons and it being fermented, etc. But if I were to tell you that we took that fresh fruit and we fermented it in sake, fresh. No one in the world has ever done that. So then how do you take a completely new idea and then just dream it? It's so hard, but when the inspiration just comes like that, do it. And I tell you, you never know what you're going to create. So we did that. We also started collecting barrels from Manhattan. Um, this is in the Regent Hotel. It's a very good bar. Uh, we upcycled their barrels. They changed their, their alcohol barrels every seven years. We took the barrels and we're now aging um, all these cacao inside there with different types of alcohol. Um, it's completely limitless. Yeah, so that was it. I think for me, what was very important in this journey was not only um, us, but the fact that we were able to reach out to the community was just so special for us. And then, of course, we started doing the workshops. Yeah, uh, I'm going to see if the chocolates are available for them to taste. Cool. Okay. okay. I want to touch a little bit about this waste. Uh, of course, it's our little secret, but um, we're really still pushing it a lot. So for us, imagination was not only about art, about you know, throwing food on the table or anything. It was also about how you could make change with packaging. So we work with Kashkao. Um, I'm not, I think you guys are in business but, and, and finance, but you know, with architects, we were actually also helping to push the limit. So we're looking for different architects to see how we could actually use uh, bio waste to, to create packaging. Um, so this was a partnership with Kashkao. They have done this. Um, they took uh, waste materials from the cocoa and they started making uh, cork boards and uh, bio leather. You can see, this is uh, from the cacao. Again, this is very, very powerful because you never know what to expect. Um, this was mushroom. I think a lot of you might know mycelium. Um, it's again, a very good material. Um, so growing our own, we were trying to make a mooncake box out of uh, mushrooms. Um, so this is again, a whole new world and you can continue to push yourself. So this is what we were doing. 
we were actually really focusing the last two years on to pushing that boundary and pushing it to to say how can we change and use less plastic and of course less waste um, not only that I think the power of, of imagination is important but giving back so if for example you know we're doing all these fancy things here how do we then give back to the community that started it they gave us that product that, that, that it, raw ingredient and they also have the power to change um, this is in Sierra Nevada we work closely with them um, it during COVID it was very very sad they basically um, they lost a lot of crop they only get paid you know a few hundred dollars um, in Peru the average wage is 300 US a month um, so we're like how can we help which farms and farmers do we choose to help and so we decided to work extremely closely with these farmers and to produce their chocolates so the chocolates that you have today are of course direct trade and we're supporting the farmers back uh, either we commit we pre-commit a larger amount so that they could continue to grow their crop and uh, I think a lot of um, this type of uh, information in the world, it's very real. And um, through all our artworks, we could actually make that power to change and raise maybe a thousand, two thousand dollars, for example, for these uh, companies. So I just want to show you this Philippines uh, small batch bar. We realized that in Philippines, same as Peru, same as the Amazons, they were just making so little. So we're like, how can we help? So every kilo of cocoa bean, one dollar goes back to these farmers and they get to spend money to buy fertilizer. And that's our range of our bars. Um, and we decide to also raise funds so that you could help us to plant more plants um, in Singapore. And that's me planting a tree. Um, it's very, very strange that I went into planting, but, um, and I don't intend to. For, 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 for obvious reasons, but you know, when, when the need is there, we plant the trees. And I think for, for us, it's very, very important that um, we support um, the local farmers and also making history. The word making history is not something that you just say, okay, I want to make history tomorrow. I mean, how do you do that, right? Um, it always sparks from an idea. I think it's something that inspires you. I don't know what inspires you, but if you find that in you and you have that in you, do it. I think um, I started as a business student. I think very much like all of you, I've got my fair share of you know, studying, but I found my passion in life and that is to make change and that's to inspire back. And so I continue to do that. Uh, I'm gonna show you a video of how we plant the cocoa trees um, and, and also part of um, I'm going to show you a video of our new brand, Pure Imagination. I wanted to live in the Amazon to learn all about cocoa. And my mom was like, no, it's too dangerous. But you know what? I went anyway. Our chocolate begins with our farmers. Direct trade means we have personal relationships. We know exactly where our cocoa comes from. It means we can be sure it's grown sustainably. Being to buy chocolate processes are straightforward, yet complicated. We start with the roasting of the beans, winnowing, which means separating the husk from the nips, crunching the nips to a fine grind, and then tempering the chocolate. Singapore single original chocolate. People thought I was crazy. We don't have much space and import 90% of our food. Where are we meant to grow the trees? Everywhere. We want to plant at least 1,000 cocoa trees. Singapore is known for many things. Maybe one day, 
chocolate will be wonder. Because for us, developing new flavors, pushing the boundaries of fermentation and aging, and experimenting with new techniques is at the heart of what we do. It's about inspiration, through ideas, taste, and imagination. Right. I'm not gonna tell you what flavor it is. I think you guess it for yourself. I think those with allergies, maybe you can uh, let, let us know first before you taste it.